Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Now today we have Topping DX3 Pro Plus. Many on the web claim that it's actually a slightly downsized in a different package DX5. That's 440 and that I really liked. It has great power, dynamics, punch, resolves so many details. And supposedly DX3 Pro Plus sounds exactly the same for half the price. Because, to quote some lines from the web, it's basically a less fancy DX5 in a smaller package and without balanced inputs and outputs. Meaning you get the same sound fidelity at half the price. Is that true? Okay, so first thing that I wanted to mention is that you can see here on the back you have three digital inputs, meaning optical, USB and coaxial. Also, only one pair of analog outputs, RCAs. No XLRs like in the case of a bigger DX5. In the front, 3.5 millimeters output for your headphones no 4.4 or XLR because once again it has single-ended output only. Power-wise it's really powerful, basically the same as DX5 here. The DAC chip is slightly different, here they used just a different Sabre DAC chip, I'll put that on the screen compared to DX5, but this one also has Bluetooth, that's neat. And another difference that you can see here in the back this one is powered with DC power supply, meaning that the small power brick that converts AC to DC is located outside of the unit. While in DX5 we had this AC power socket that you would plug directly into your mains, meaning that the power supply in DX5 is completely located inside of the unit. And maybe that's the reason the DX5 actually runs noticeably hotter. I'm not sure, I'm just thinking out loud, maybe it's because AC to DC conversion is happening inside, maybe topping actually biased its amplifier more towards a class or something like that, but it's definitely noticeable. While I was testing DX3 Pro, it would get warm, just a little bit, nothing too much, and when it actually goes to standby, it cools down. While DX5 here, runs hotter definitely and even when it goes in standby mode it stays considerably hotter so i'm not sure if that's only because power supply differences or is it maybe a topology difference something that actually influences the sound but i'll tell you about the sound part just a little bit later before i do that i just wanted to say that this is a typical topping unit it has nice big readable amber digits on the front display and I don't want to bother you with going through functions and how the unit works actually because it's the same as every topping before it and as the old DX3 Pro without plus that came few years ago so let's go to the most important part and that's how it sounds so I first hooked it directly to several of my headphones that way I was basically testing it as a two-in-one device using its internal DAC and its headphone amp. And I've definitely noticed that the headphone amp is powerful and strong and it can drive basically anything I connect to it. Regarding that, I feel it's exactly the same as the X5 that you can see below this unit. And the sound is insanely detailed in that upper register, just as you would expect from a topping unit. So micro details, edges and everything is so crisp. And the same goes for the texture of the tone. So speaking about these small, tiny, husky, high frequency details, that's really easily observable and probably class leading, but I'll get into that a little bit later when I compare it with everything else. And next I've noticed that dynamically it is a snappy sounding unit. It has liveliness when it comes to edges and microdynamics, but it doesn't really feel as dynamic 
and punchy in a sense of a big scale and like whom big grunt so it's more of a like fast paced but tiny hitter you know more of a kung fu fighter tsup, 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 than a heavy boxer or something like that i don't know sports this was a bad attempt of an analogy i apologize but you get the gist it's quick fast-paced, detailed, high-frequency oriented, but there is also enough bass, and bass is quite punchy also. And for example, if I would listen to something like a drum set, double pedal, things like that, that have force, that have impact, and I was thinking why then I feel that this sounds high-frequency oriented, quick and speedy without much weight. And that is because the sound in general outside of that bass region, it's not particularly weighty and full. So as soon as we step out of the bass region and we go into upper bass, lower mid range, and that's where the fullness of tones, fullness of vocals and instruments comes from. That's not particularly full, weighty and rich sounding. So mid-range has that sort of leanness to it and it creates that signature, more budget topping devices sound. So I didn't want to ponder more about am I hearing it right or not? Uh, so I just went ahead and compared it to a few of my favorites. And the first one was this FX Audio DAC M1. Now, if you remember this review, I really like this one. It's around 200 US dollars also, the same as the X3 Pro Plus. And it's also quite quick and edgy and analytical sounding. But at the moment when I got this, it was so much more resolving than anything else at the time that I could compare it with, like Fio K5 Pro or Logg D30. That's another great device, but I felt that DAC M1 here edged them in terms of snappiness and detail retrieval and overall liveliness of the sound. So I kept this as my favorite two-in-one unit around 200 US dollars. It's just really lively sounding, detailed sounding unit. Now in direct comparison with DX3 Pro Plus, I have to say the DX3 Pro sounds even more detailed. Those really tiny details, including texture overtone, it's just more revealing and more resolving with DX3. Also, DX3 clearly have more power on its headphone output. And that means better kick, better drive of your headphones. So basically they have similarly lean and edge oriented, high frequency oriented sound, lean in the mid range. But I think that DX3 Pro Plus is doing it better and it even manages to have more grunt, especially in the lower bass when it kicks, it really kicks. So I can declare that DAC M1 is no longer my reference when it comes to 200 US dollars DACs and amps. I also quickly compared their DAC outputs and I once again found that the same thing as with headphones, slightly cleaner, slightly more detailed and more resolving DX3 Pro Plus. So basically DAC M1, great run, but now we basically have a contender that's doing the sound in a really similar fashion, but doing it just slightly better. Now don't get me wrong, if you have this one, it's still a great sounding unit. If you find it on a sale, maybe 20, 30, 50 US dollars cheaper than the X3 Pro, and you don't need much power for your headphones, it can be a pretty great deal. But if the price is same, I would definitely go for the X3 Pro Plus. Next, I quickly compared it with Shanling UA5. Now this is a dongle unit, 
but many of you ask me quite often, like how desktop units compare to these dongle DACs? And they often say like desktop unit has more power, it has more drive, it has more kick. And that's true if I compare it to UA5. The X3 Pro Plus just sounds more lively, kicky, punchy, and it has cleaner and crisper edges too. It has details that UA5 just cannot resolve even though it's one of the most, if not the most resolving dongle deck that I've tried at this price point. But it's not one-sided story here really because UA5 here has warmer and fuller tonality. That's more natural in my opinion. And if you are listening with headphones that are easy to drive, and if you are listening to the music that's maybe slow music has a lot of vocals full lush vocals and maybe natural acoustic instruments things like that where tone timbre and tone richness means more than actual kickiness liveliness and fast pace of the x3 pro this can still be a slightly better choice for example when i listen to this song and this beautiful vocal definitely sounded fuller and just more natural, more relaxed and with more chestiness to UA5 than it sounded through the X3 Pro Plus. But things completely turn around when you play something really fast paced with edges, with dynamics. For example, I really like this song, I often test with it. And this is a lively sounding song. And it sounds good through UA5, but it really comes alive and, and the pace is great and the rhythm is fast and forceful with the X3 Pro Plus, the way that UA5 just cannot do. Finally, compared to the X5, that is twice the price. In my mind, in my opinion, it was good enough to take the place of my D30 Pro and A30 Pro stack. That's more expensive, but this one is slightly more revealing. It's also a little bit more analytical and a little bit edgier sounding, but it was still pretty great overall. And compared directly to DX3 Pro Plus, you notice that DX5 has better tone timbre. It has fuller mid-range. Now, a lot of things are completely comparable. So that high frequency detail retrieval, basically the same. Power that I feel is going into my headphones, that kick, uh, microdynamics, energy of the edges and transients, I again feel it's basically almost the same with these two units. But as soon as I play any song that has full vocal or just full nice tone in it. So for example, if I play this song that I really like, it's just a girl playing a cello and it's a full really lush tone. It's rich mid-range tone that has a lot of body and a lot of richness. It has that energy. It, it, it feels like a movie song, something that you would hear in a Lord of the Rings or something like that. And it should have that energy and that grand thick tone when she's playing. And it does have that through topping the X5. Even though I said the X5 is slightly analytical on its own, it has enough fullness and enough juice to make this sound grand and full and thick. When I play it through the X3 Pro Plus, it just thins out and it doesn't feel like the same instrument anymore. It has texture, it has all the edges, but the inner fullness, inner body of that tone is missing. And because of that, I'm totally missing the, the true vibe and true feeling of that song when I listen it through the X3 Pro Plus. 
I even prefer listening it through UA5 channeling. Even though it's not as detailed and kicky, but if you have something like this with sustained, thick, full-bodied tones, it just sounds as it should, with full-bodied, neutral, natural-sounding DAX compared to this kicky but and detailed but lean sounding one. Then I went on and quickly compared its DAC output to DX5's DAC output. And what I found out is that a lot of that mid-range thinness and leanness is still present on its DAC outputs. So it's coming from a DAC. And hooking DX3 Pro Plus to topping A30 Pro Amp added a little bit of grunt and a little bit of fullness because A30 Pro is amp that's a little bit warmer and fuller sounding, but it still wasn't as good as DX5 alone. I cannot fully assess differences between amp sections of DX3 Pro Plus and DX5 because it's difficult to do that because you don't have analog inputs to test them separately, but I can definitely tell that even if you add a really powerful external amp, DX3 Pro Plus will not sound as DX5 because its DAC section sounds thinner and leaner and just not as full-bodied as DX5. That would answer that question. Is this a smaller version with completely same sound fidelity of DX5? No, it's not. It is a pretty good device on its own. It has some class leading qualities, like it resolves details with insane precision. It has a lot of kick, a lot of microdynamics and liveliness in that sense. It also has pretty punchy and forceful bass, but because it definitely lacks some mid-range fullness and juice, it's not for everybody. I guess that people that like to listen to electronic music and like that kick and don't care much about tone timbre and tone richness, this can be a really good purchase. It's one of the most powerful, most driven, most kicky and most detailed sounding DAC slash amp combos that I've heard. And with right music genres, it can really sound impressive. But if you like to listen to natural recordings, to a lot of vocals, to a lot of acoustic instruments, there are better options on the market in my opinion. And that would be all for today. Now, I'll soon have something else coming from Topping. It's going to be a little bit more expensive than DX3 Pro Plus here, but it's a damn mean device. Stay tuned, subscribe, comment, like, become a patron, use my affiliate links.